in their report, they show what the view from the west would look like uh, into the collapse and from the south. And you can see that the distortion of their building is considerable in their model. So that doesn't match the observed collapse. So it can't be uh, used as a model for to explain the collapse if it can't match the collapse. I concur with Mr. Angle uh, relative to the uh, the NIST model of how they treated the perimeter frame. This is a very stiff structure. Uh, the, the the outer shell of Building 7 is made up of a very, very rigid grid, which I will get into in future videos. Uh, and, and it simply can't sag into spaghetti-looking shapes like this. It can't do it. Uh, it. It couldn't even really break apart up here on its own. It's just too stiff. It's too too rigid. You can see how it maintains all its lines on the way down. So I, I, I think I understand why NIST uh, attempted to, to do something with some distortion up here because we do see some distortion in the in the in the building as it's falling I'm gonna hold my cursor at that line of that left edge that's the northwest corner look how it moves out to the left over there see that it's even doing it before it actually drops if you watch it close and I'll show you that in a minute now, the building is not shifting over there because you can see from this line here, it's staying in the same place pretty much. So the building isn't shifting, and it's too rigid of a structure for it to stretch over there. So something else is going on here. Let's go to uh, David Chandler and uh, let him describe for us what we're looking at. But something's going on here. See that little uh, kink in the roof line? That's not a downward kink. This is the same, this is about the same time in the fall of the building as seen from a camera looking level with the roof line, and you don't see any kink. How could you see zero kink from a level perspective and yet see a, what looks like a V shaped kink from below? It's folded laterally not folded downward. So it's not a downward kink in the roof line, it's a lateral fold in the wall of the building that gives them that V-shape appearance when seen from this angle. Mr. Chandler is correct. You can see right here uh, roughly the fold line. So this isn't going to be an exact straight line, it's kind of curving around a little bit, it looks like, but it's definitely a fold. It eventually creases, and this this half of the structure breaks apart. Uh, but you can you can clearly see from here that this whole half of the of the structure is now facing more toward the camera, and this one still this side still has its original orientation. So given that this is a solid uh, trapezoid four-sided shape uh, in order for this to happen this whole half of the structure over here is falling over to begin collapse now this side continued to fall over to the north we can see it in in uh, other views of collapse. Uh, this is this is one here uh, taken. Now that that view I just showed you, the, the the viewing angle was from way over here on the right. This one, your viewing angle is from over here on the left. You're looking more dead into that uh, that east corner, and this is the, this is that east corner right here. Okay, you can right there. You can see it. It's falling over. It's falling over back to the north, which is back this way. See how much higher it is than, than the, the building back over here, the, the roof line that you can see? It's falling away from you. This one is falling towards you at an, at an angle. And, and the, these two are, are it's, it's broken apart now at this point. 
Now, now this part of the structure that's falling over right here, it ended up crashing into uh, Fighterman Hall across a four-lane highway, well, four-lane street plus sidewalks, 15 stories up. It crashed into to that building, causing this damage right here. That's that's 15 floors up. It fell over. So that that corner of the building started falling over, and it kept falling over. Now we're going to look at it a little closer. I slowed this down so it so you can can see it better. Thing to notice with this view, and uh, I got somebody else did that drew those lines in, but with those that line helps you orient. This is not dropping at all. This is not dropping at all. Immediately when this west penthouse goes down, something snaps and and releases this half of the structure and it starts falling over. And there's no down motion. Now, I hate to be the bearer of bad news to a lot of people, but that right there proves that this collapse wasn't caused by controlled demolition. It, it can't... It, it can't make it move this way. Uh, now, you can say, well, it, it came straight down at free fall or near free fall speed. Well, it wasn't exactly straight down. I've shown that in the previous video. Uh, it wasn't exactly free fall speed. And you really can't see uh, which way this, this edge is leaning when it falls. But the mere fact that it begins to fall over before there's any drop shows us that it wasn't controlled demolition that caused it. You can see this edge of the building over here, you can see by that angle that it's going it's going all the way down near the ground. It's not it's not crimping anywhere in here causing that motion. That you can you can see by the by the flexing of the uh, of this north wall right here. See that's bending. It's bending all the way down here. It's the whole north face is bending from from top to what looks like near bottom. So this whole half of the structure, as soon as this west penthouse goes down, snaps and starts falling over to the north before any down motion, and that's key. And so so this is a major feature now. Now this this is a clue right here that got my attention at first was this motion right here out to the west a long time ago. I didn't understand it for a long time. But there, and and if anyone's interested in seeing how um, how we can determine what this motion is, I'm just giving you the short version. Uh, but it's well documented. I, I posted a uh, a thread on a uh, on a forum. And the link is in the comment section, and it's all laid out how we can tell what this motion is. I mean, I can just sit here and see it visually. I can see this this part over here is turning to face the camera. So that's a big clue. But there's another clue here. I'm not going to point it out what it is. Uh, see if you can figure out what it is. But there's a major clue in this little short snippet of collapse, which tells us that NIST, number one, uh, failed to accurately assess the damage to this building. The, the damage was far greater than what NIST assessed. And two, uh, uh, clear evidence for what happened to the building. There's a clue in this. See if you can find it. Uh, but let's go back now and compare. Now that you understand this a little better, this is a major anomaly right here. Now, let's use M Mr. Angle's own criteria and look at this model produced by the uh, University of Alaska Fairbanks, Professor Halsey's report. This anomaly is completely ignored. It doesn't match what we can see. Therefore, this this can't uh, this can this is invalid. It cannot be used to explain collapse. It can't. What did he say? The 
time. So it can't be uh, used as a model for to explain the collapse if it can't match the So it can't be uh, used as a model for to explain the collapse if it can't match the collapse. So it can't be uh, used as a model for to explain the collapse if it can't.